In this video, I'm going to go over how to spike an IV bag and set your fluid pump up from scratch. So, some people might keep this up on the fluid pole, but I like to have it down when I'm spiking it with the giving set. So, first things first, I'm going to keep everything sterile because if any of the ends of these fluid lines touch anything, that cannot be used because we're going intravenously, it has to be super sterile. So, if I was to take a cap off, it was to touch a bench, touch a finger, anything like that, it needs to be discarded and you need a fresh one. So, fluid bag is down. I'm going to start with removing this blue cap. So it's a twist. It's not going to break the seal. So if I twist that off and place it like this, the fluid isn't going to come out because there is a seal in there, which is what we're going to break with the spike on the giving set. So I'm going to start by, actually I'm going to prep these so they're kind of open for me. So here's like an autocarbable bag. They just, they open like an autocarb bag. So they just and you'll have an open section. So I want to open them up, but keeping them from touching anything dirty. So I'll do that with both of them. So that's what I'm getting set, and this is my extension set. So I've got them both out now, because we'll have to prime these before we insert them into the fluid pump. Some people will prime them using the fluid pump but I like to do it without but it's up to you it's personal preference really so with your fluid bag I'm going to twist this top and this comes up discard of that throw it over there and see this has got a seal on it if I were to go like this nothing's going to come out but once we do insert that spike it does create an opening so if that spike isn't inserted completely you might get fluid coming right out the sides so I'm going to see this has got a cap on it, so I'm going to remove this cap actually first. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to attach my giving set to my extension set, keeping the caps on the ends of each of these. I'm going to remove this cap like this, and I'm going to attach this end of this giving set and attach this. This has got a lure lock on it as well, which I'm going to use. So I'm just going to insert the giving set to the extension set, lock that in place. If your sets do come with locks, definitely use them. So that is locked in place now. So I've got my giving set, which is attached to my extension set, which will go to the patient. So let's get rid of this. So I've got all this sitting here. What I want to do too before I'm inserting this is because if I insert this and turn this bag up, all the fluid is going to come down and it's going to come out the other end of my extension set. So I want to just put a lock on at the moment. I like to use the rolly one the most, so I'm going to clamp that off just so that the fluid is going to stop there until I'm over the sink or wherever I'm ready to kind of expel that water. So I just lift this cap off this bike. This spike definitely cannot touch anything at all. If it was to touch the table or anything, it's not sterile anymore. And it needs to go on the video and get a fresh one. Spiking this into the bag, I'm going to insert it right into that blue hole without touching the surroundings, without touching any other part, just straight in. So it's like this. So I want this whole section to be right down and snug in there. So all you need to do is twist back and forth, I find. You can twist it round and round, but I just go back and forth. Twist, twist, twist. Keep going. And you can see it has come right up close to that section on the pump. So now, if I flip it upside down, this chain is going to be semi-full. I want to squeeze it so that it's half full. So I'll show you. I want to flip this up. And it's not going to come out because I'm blocked here. But if we squeeze this chamber, you can see the water starting to come down now. So I want it to be about halfway. And now it's blocked. And then we've got little air bubbles because I do have it blocked. Um, so we've got air bubbles here. So we need to make sure that they are removed before attaching to the patient. So what I like to do is hang this up nice and high from a fluid stand. And then I will just let this run through into like a sink. 
some people will put it through the IV pump and press prime and let it film through. I just find that it takes a lot of time. You definitely can do that, it's up to you. But I just think that this is quicker and this is how I've always done it, so this is what I'm going to do. So, I just want to be over the sink. And all of these bubbles are going to drain out once I open this clamp. So. And you can see that water is now just running, it's dripping, it's going faster. The higher this is, the faster that's going to go. If my fluid bag was quite low, this might not flow as well because I've got it quite high here. You can see, you can see no air bubbles left in here now. Just visually inspect. I'm going to replace the cap and now I'm going to lock it off again. Now I'm happy that my whole fluid line is nice and prep, prepped and primed and ready to be inserted into the fluid pump. Now we want to thread it through the IV pump, making sure that you are threading it through the correct way. This happens more than you would think. Make sure you're following the arrows in your fluid pump. And some of them are different. Some of them will go left, some of them will go right, so just double check. just depends on where it's been manufactured. So, we want to thread the giving set through the IV pump, not the extension set, because this is like a minimum volume thread it's super small so that is just going to fall around in here so we want it to be the giving set making sure that you you can either have like one lock on this end of this, the pump and then the rest on the other every fluid pump is going to be different with this particular one it has a pull section down the bottom which opens up the door and in here you probably can see but it's got the arrows going from it's got the arrows going from right to left so i want my fluid line to go right to left here and then I'm going to keep this lock on this side so I'm going to clamp that off. This is sitting at about halfway which I'm happy with and I'm going to, so I've locked this one and I'm going to release this clamp so that it's got a little bit of movement in there. Just visually checking as well that you've got no air bubbles in here. I'm really happy with this, I've got none at all. So now I'm going to thread it through this IV pump. So making sure that you are pushing it in to the little sensors far enough. If they're even sitting semi out, the fluid pump is going to have difficulty measuring, sending it to the patient, you're going to get errors, you're going to get down occlusion, you're going to get air in the line, issues beeping, beeping that you don't want to hear. So setting it up properly from the start is going to help you avoid all those issues as well. So with this one, it's got two proper sensors in here. I'm just going to make sure that this fluid line is pushed nice and firmly into those. And it has an additional clamp here, this grey little button. So you pull it up and to the side. Up and to the side and then the fluid line goes underneath. And then to close it, let me just check how to do this properly. And then pull the grey button across again and it clamps it nicely and securely in place. So now I'm happy that it is sitting in there firmly. There's enough give on this end that it's not going to pull too much and cause an occlusion on this end and I'm going to close the door. With this door make sure that you're closing it with both fingers because if you close one side this one needs to be closed as well so that will say that the door's open even if you think you've closed it. So make sure you're pushing it nice and secure. You'll do two clicks and now it's ready to go. This end I would attach to my patient. I would either attach this straight to their IV or if they've got a little, like a little T-piece T-port attached to them, like this one. I find that some of these are really heavy. We've created this really, really light, lightweight one. Um, even on the tiniest patients, it's nice and delicate and it's not kind of weighing down, pulling that catheter out of that patient's leg. So this you would keep to attach to the patient's IV and you could wrap it up in IV when you, uh, IV wrap when they're going out for a walk. And then this is what you would attach. So, so that's attached to a patient. You would attach this giving set to this T4. And then you're good to go. So that's the basics on spiking your bag and putting it into an IV pump.